Uh, a wonderful moment for North Melbourne, a moment that Dennis Pagan will remember for a long time. Things are a little different this year, though. Let's have a chat with him now with our own Lee Matthews. Well, Dennis, it's your 100th game this week. Did you ever think that there wouldn't be a first game of senior coaching? I did, but I hope someone wouldn't have uh, dug it up. It's uh, something that uh, I really don't want to get any, any publicity or exposure for. You never actually sort of gave up on the senior coaching idea? I mean, did you think it was just something I would never do? I mean, you always thought it would happen? Or? Well, no, probably in the finish I didn't. I didn't really think a lot about it. I just wanted to do the best I could. I was um, up at Essendon in 92 and coaching the reserves, and I thought probably that's probably going to be my lot in life. And I was quite happy to accept that. Um, didn't stop me from wanting to be uh, successful and wanting to do the best I can and uh, or best I could, and be really enthusiastic about it. Um, and it, it, it did come as a shock when I was asked to uh, come um, sit down and uh, have a chat with the board here. Could you sort of give a yes or no to whether you think the, the, this premiership hangover, to use the term, has had any effect at all? No, I, I don't think there's a premiership hangover. I think our guys have trained physically. Um, as well as they possibly could. I couldn't be critical in that area. I think it boils down to uh, you know, what's between your ears and how you apply yourself and, and in a few other areas. And, and I suppose your, your mental preparation is the catalyst for everything you do well. Yeah. And I just think we've been inconsistent in that area. You know, we played remarkably well against Carlton. Mm. Um, you know, we, uh, we didn't play well against uh, uh, Essendon, but we still had our opportunities if we had been a bit smarter with the delivery of the ball through the midfield, mm. instead of just bombing it in and, uh, and allowing you know, the Essendon defence to spoil or to, or to take easy, uh, uh, uncontested marks. You got into the first game, it seemed like you had just about everyone up and playing, and then obviously for a time there, it looked like Kerry and, and McCurden might be gone both long term. Can I just ask you uh, what went through your mind when that was first a possibility? Yeah, I just I thought first of First game, all of a sudden, you know, we're going okay and then bang, first fair income game. And it happened pretty quickly. Didn't have a chance to think of it during the, uh, uh, during the game. I went home and watched the tape on TV. Um, I'm sure for 20 minutes or so our guys were in a, in a state of shock. Yeah. Um, sort of came to reality when Wayne popped in my place, he doesn't live far from me, um, on the way back from the specialist, told me the scenario. Um, and I thought, gee, OK, that's footy. The mm. road to success is always under construction. Just when you think you got it right or it's going well, it jumps up and bites you in the face. And you've just got to persist and persevere and, and work your way through those troughs. So what's the current expectation about when uh, Wayne will return? He sees the specialist on Monday, um, and, then, and then he starts his rehabilitation process. I suppose the biggest thing that strikes you about Wayne Carey, and I think it's the most significant uh, characteristic of a, of a leader, is his mental toughness. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anyone as mentally tough as Wayne. Mm. And he's played with injuries other guys wouldn't even get out in the track. Um, and if anyone can get back in, 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 say, six weeks, I believe Wayne Carey can. And it wouldn't surprise me if it was five weeks. He's such a, a strong individual. And you watch him go through his, uh, his whole process. Even when he was right at training, no, he doesn't want to be beaten by anybody in the gym. He doesn't want to be beaten by anybody at table tennis. He wants to win everything. And you know, I think it's just a, an enormous uh, a part of Wayne Carey's uh, uh, well, reason why he's successful. Could you give us a little percentage thing of how important what happens within the two and a half hours is in terms of what makes a very good coach and you know and a, and a more average coach? Yeah, I think I think match day is probably only ten percent of the whole operation. Mm -hmm. It starts early in the week, yeah. training, uh, you focus with the individuals, uh, your encouragement and your positive approach in, in, in setting up uh, situations and matchups for them, your training, uh, uh, the atmosphere you create, mm -hmm. um, your planning, uh, your matchups. Most of your work's done early in the week. It's very, very rare that you can say, oh, match day, gee, that was a terrific move and uh, it helped the team uh, win. It probably happens one in ten, I would think. Um, yeah, yeah. But it is a very significant part of it. Uh, I, there, there are some times you think to yourself, gee, I know I got through to the players then, and other times you think, gee, I was terrible. Give, given that the public, Dennis Pagan, and the sort of like, the, and then the intense one that people see, do you think that's... Um, what you kind of are as a person, or that's your coaching, what you are with the coaching hat on? No, I think I'm completely different as a person. Yeah. You know, you, you, the people judge you on a quarter time and three quarter time when they see you on TV and that sort of yeah. stuff, but it isn't the real Dennis Pagan. So, what do you do f to relax? Without the football hat on, what, you know, what, what are the things that you do? Just I've got other things in, that's probably one of my weaknesses. I, I don't uh, give myself a, enough, uh, well, I say quality downtime. Mm. Um, I'm interested in, uh, in, in horse racing. 
um, probably more on the brooding side of things than anything else. And you mentioned yeah. well, you mentioned what before we did this that and that you know one of your ambitions is to uh, to get a few mares and breed eventually that kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like I'd like to get get hold of a, um, a, a staying filly and perhaps build up some sort of uh, um, setup where you might have two or three you know, you know well pedigreed horses and perhaps um, get the opportunity later on in life when football's all over to uh, to pursue that uh, uh, adventure. Uh, tell me about any of uh, the motivational tools that you've used that have seemed to work well. I look back probably two or three years ago and we'd lost three on the trot and we're up against West Coast yeah. and it was at uh, Princess Park. Um, I got the players to take control of the whole week. I could think that on the Monday night we went up to a, a local gymnasium, it was in, later on in the year. Yeah. We got into a bus, I can remember putting uh, 100, box, 100 uh, dollars in my sock and I told the bus driver on the way back we'll stop at the uh, Sydney Lions Club and uh, I got the players all in their North Melbourne gear and runners. We went in and I said we'll have two or three pots each. Yeah. Everyone has got to tell a joke. And it, uh, it was, a, it was a, probably a long shot and it came off and uh, uh, really focused just for the week. Uh, we trained very well the next night, we had a, had a dinner. Something completely different that we'd done before and we went out and we beat West Coast by 60 points. Yeah. And I thought something I've ever spoken about, uh, probably two or three, two years ago now, and three years ago perhaps, and uh, it's something completely uh, right, off the, uh, uh, right off the trail and uh, it seemed to work well because it gave us a real bond, a real, f it took the pressure off. Yeah. Um, was the strangest thing. I, I often think about it now. And mm. if, if, a, if a photographer or a journalist had been there and, and seen everyone sitting in the, in the yeah. bar um, having a few beers, um, and it was, it just took the pressure off everybody at that stage because of, you know the, everyone was coming us at 100 miles an hour, and I just thought it was probably at the right time. It was worth a punt, and uh, it worked for us. What about specific videos of any sort? Any particular one or that's kind of provided a good motivational point of view. We do a lot of positive reinforcement with the videos to... Which is your to, own action to, yeah, shots. To, yeah, yeah. To, to music and... Yeah. Um, Any non-footy ones, like any sort of like from left field? I mean, I heard something about the, a goose type video. I knew you were coming some, to that. Well, only I, heard, that's, I know I've told as much as I know yeah. about it. But things that are not necessarily footy action, positive reinforcement, we know, but things that are nothing to do with footy but give a message or something. Yeah, yeah we did. We had one... Um, when Wayne Carey and Corey were injured, and Corey came up and Wayne didn't, and it was called Lessons from Geese. And it was a video that probably went for two minutes, and uh, on the formation of Geese, how the leader always flies in the front in the V formation, yeah. and when he falls out, someone else steps up and takes his spot, and when someone's injured, what Geese do, and it was, uh, it certainly worked for us um, prior to the Carlton game, and we played it a couple of times during the week, and even got some positive reinforcement or, or, or positive tapes mm. of our guys with the same tune. It was a very, very catchy tune. Do you, I mean, you've had a successful time here. I mean, you've now a high reputation AFL coach. Therefore, do you see yourself as a career coach now? Got no alternative. Um, I intend to coach for, for 10 years. Yeah. You know, um, I love coaching. You know, if you've got a good job, uh, you don't have to go to work. That's the way I see it. And it's uh, sure there are enormous pressures and uh, exhilarations, uh, highs and lows, um, but you wouldn't change it for anything. No, well done, Lee Matthews, speaking there with Dennis Pagan, and uh, great to get an insight into the coach. Mm. Just from your own point of view, back in your days at North Melbourne with those coaches you had, Barry Cable, Ron Barassi and co, can you remember an incident like the money in the sock, uh, something to try and inspire the boys? Well, there was one incident uh, or situation on a Monday night after we'd been beaten with Barry Cable, uh, who decided rather than train, we'd go up to the uh, the Castle Hotel. We did so, Caves didn't even know where it was, and in his inimitable way, he said, let's pair off in threes and go to the bar. <laughs> we went to the bar, he didn't know where the bar was. We asked him to buy the drinks, he didn't have any money. He didn't know what to do, he'd never been inside a pub before. We got there at about seven o'clock, he left at about eight, and I think we had trouble getting most of the bikes out by 12. <laughs> did but you win on the we Saturday? Did. We won on the Saturday, yeah. Oh, but and I think uh, it's just every now and then, I mean, it's just it's break a time. Break from routine. Yeah, it's a yep. break from routine. I mean, you, I mean, you don't want it to go on and on, but it's, uh, I mean, it does just uh, build a bond if you need that, yeah. just a break, which is good. Crowd, incidentally, building up here at Football Park. Uh, I don't think they're going to get the sellout type that they had last week, but... Uh, it's the, the sort of day, uh, a magnificent autumn day, we're expecting a top of 29 where you can uh, sit out the back and enjoy a barbecue for a while and then come in and join your friends here in the crowd. Uh, 
another downer too has just come through. Dipper's called and he wants an oh. appearance. But can you believe it? I don't think he'd use a phone. Does he know how to use no, a phone? Well, apparently someone rang for oh, him. Rang but for him yeah. We're looking at that, Dipper, so we'll call you, OK? Don't worry. At the MCG too, crowds are starting to build up uh, as well as enjoying their lunch. And uh, that should be a rip-roaring game. The Tigers, well supported. And North Melbourne, there's a familiar face in uh, the North Camp, but they're streaming in to the MCG. Just a uh, couple of fantastic days in both cities today for uh, what should be two excellent games of footy. Great boon for footy, isn't it, Sandy, to have that sort of weather and attract the people. 30, nearly 36,000 at Waverley last night. Uh, a good crowd in Perth also on Friday night. So uh, it's been great all round, and there's going to be more of it to come. Certainly is uh, this afternoon, right here on 7. Turn the corner, had a RHG, a red hot dog, and yeah, we TCA.